Life Matters continues with Dave and Nancy on Lake 96.1. I'm curious to get uh, Judy's, Judy's answer to the question that I posed you at the top of the hour, Nancy. Would you rather have it be 105 degrees and dry or 99 degrees and humid? Dry. That's what you said earlier. Judy, what say you? Um, I try to be content in all circumstances. <laughs> That's what the Word of God says, to be content in all circumstances. Just be and happy. politicians play both <laughs> sides of the aisle. Correct. Uh, There's such a big difference because in Las Vegas and Arizona, it's that dry heat, which is still hot. I don't deny that. But it doesn't make your eyeballs sweat. This humidity that we've been experiencing, and it's, it's calmed down a little bit this weekend, but Wednesday, especially of last week, goodness, it almost took your breath away when you walked outside. It's miserable. And people say, do you, would, you, would you rather have Would you have, rather have it cold or would you rather have it hot? I would rather have it cold because I can get warm. I agree. You know, I can put I on understand. more layers of clothes. I can right. put on blankets. I can, you know, whatever. But you can't get cool. I mean, it's it's. There's it's a just space tough. heater in my office if you want me to bring that in right now. If you're feeling a little under the weather, I can warm you up. I have been feeling under the weather lately, but exactly. I think I'm good. There's an outlet right there, no more than two feet away from I'm you. I'm not can... cold. I've been on fire. All right. Just making sure. Yes. I'm here I for don't you. Need a he- I... Yes, Dave. I good know. morning, Judy. Good morning. He's Judy, here for me. Now a friend of the program. <laughs> um, again, people ask me, who is this Judy lady you guys have on? And <laughs> motivational. Is that what they this, say? Who is this Judy is lady? This well, that be some of the other things I've been called. <laughs> yeah. The word motivational speaker, though, I think gives them an idea of what you are, but it's really a lot more than that, correct? Like, for instance, you had an engagement last night. Yes. My husband and I were speaking in Ohio to um, a ministry that we've gotten involved in called Retrovi. Right. We were speaking with uh, troubled marriages, couples who have, have had struggles and whose marriages have been restored. And so it's a unique opportunity to minister to people in the same place that we've been. Right. And offer our hope and our experience and our strength and where that comes from. It's been extremely hot out. Yeah. I have a question for Nancy because of your background, and I have a question for Judy because of, because of her background. When it says, what? Why are you snickering to yourself? I'm not trying to know. stump you. These are, quite, these are just your, your – I want your viewpoint. The show is called Life Matters. This is a life matter. I want your viewpoint because you have insight into this. As I, I don't, I, what I've noticed is, is that as we get closer to Dave's wedding, he, it's like – he asks us more He's questions. He's looking for some wisdom. He is. Yeah. This has <laughs> finally. nothing to do with relationships <laughs> yeah. between boys okay. and girls. But if okay. there's two women Zip. in a room, it's going to be brought around to the relationship. That's program. right. Because sure we are relational be. to the core, my That's friend. That's right. Yeah, the over-under is uh, 8.15 before yeah. you <laughs> 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 Right. Congratulations. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Nancy, you're the general manager of the radio station. It's been extremely hot. It's been probably the biggest heat wave we've had since 1995 around here. 16 years. 1995. Very good. Nice. As hot as it's been, how do you coordinate a dress code when it comes to that? Because there's a tendency when it's as hot as it has been to obviously wear a short sleeve shirt as opposed to a long sleeve shirt. So if a employee, and again, every business is different, McDonald's, corporate America, and all points in between, how do you coordinate a dress code for your employees when the weather is as hot as it is because in the winter time that's obviously not an issue if you wear 14 scarves you wear 14 <laughs> scarves on the flip side there is a fine line that you need to draw between inappropriate and appropriate even taking into consideration how hot the weather's been <laughs> three blinks blink blink well, blink <laughs> um, as she sits here in a tube top and a thong <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what are you talking about? My outfit for Dave? Um, I, I, you know, I just don't have that problem because I don't have a sales staff that I have to worry about dressing inappropriately. But, uh, you know, you just you got to have you have to be able to walk into a client's office and and not have them think that you're there for other reasons than to, you know, do business. And so there are plenty of ways to dress that are still respectful to yourself without, you know, hanging all over the place and 
showing people things that well, you don't need to see. I don't think that, I mean, you know, my staff has, they have air conditioned car. You know, the only time, it's not like they're, you know, walking around on the beach of Lake Geneva doing business. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, it's, they go into businesses and they're in their cars and they're in the office and it's all air con- I mean, so I don't really see it as. Flip flops or sandals. Is that appropriate for someone to come no. into work? No. And they know that. Or any work, for that matter. Again, every oh, business I, is different. I mean, you're, if you're a lifeguard, clearly. But, <laughs> well. <laughs> You'll be wearing your heels today. <laughs> but that, but that's my question, you know. Is there, is it an unwritten rule that you have to be a certain way in this hot weather? Or is... Weather you has, make... you know what, weather has nothing to do with it. Because my male sales guys still have to wear their shirts and their ties. Mm-hmm. And that's my question. Is Do you cut them a little slack? Maybe no. a nice polo shirt as um, opposed to... Yeah, but there's not much difference between a polo shirt and a short sleeve button up shirt. Whatever. I, you know, I, it's, you just have to remember you're representing the station. And, and, you know, but we also have a unique, you know, we sit kind of in a unique position because we're a radio station. And so we can get away with maybe a little more casual business clothes because we, we are around to also have a good time and entertain people and, you know, and, and, you know, be positive and things like that. So, you you know, it's not like we're just all business all the time and you have to, you know, as I do my, you know. We <laughs> if you could just see me. Lollipop. Right. <laughs> She's got the elbows. <laughs> but, you know, we're angle. not. And so, you know, we have a little bit of leniency there. But, no, you just, you have to be respectful in how you dress. And I don't, I don't really care what the weather is. And But, again, I don't have any, I don't have any staff members that I have to worry about that with. So, Judy, what say you? You know, Different perspective, obviously. Yes, it's been a long time since I've been in the workplace. Mm-hmm. But the general rule for me was always you reflect the dress of the people that you're calling on. Right. But I can tell you in my own faith walk, I never understood until the past few years the importance of the message your dress carries and how modest dress or appropriate dress really speaks volumes to your faith. Um, and I, you know, I have a couple teenage children and I watch the way... Uh, the children, the teenagers are dressing these days. Right. And even though it's out of the workplace, I see them in many workplace uh, scenarios. And like you just said, you want to be entertaining and get people's attention. Well, they do <laughs> while leaving absolutely nothing to the imagination. Um, and to me, the dignity of the human person is so important. Mm-hmm. And I think as women, we want to be beautiful. We want to be sought after and seen but it's it's so sad to me that lengths that we go to, and I'll say we, uh, to have that happen, right. and what we give up in order for it to happen. Right. Now you're both parents. You have two teenage boys, Judy. I have two teenage boys and a 12 year old girl who's, you know, 18, going on 18. Oh, very nice, Nancy. You have two uh, daughters in their 20s now. Mm-hmm. As a parent, you're at home. It's summertime. Kids are out of school, whether they go to college or not. They want to have their friends over, and let's say their friends come over looking like they just got out of the sugar shack. How is a parent... How is a I'm parent, laughing because it happens every day. That's my point. <laughs> yeah. How as a parent do you approach that topic? Because at the end of the day, it's still your house, it's your mortgage, it's your rules. Do you tell your children's friends that how what they're wearing is inappropriate? Or do you go through your children and have them kind of, hey, just so you know, my mom really doesn't appreciate seeing fill in the blank. How do you handle oh, that uh, Well, topic? it depends. Well, let me, let's, let's set some boundaries. What is appropriate dress in your home and what isn't as far as your children's friends coming over to visit or grab something out of the fridge, whatever it may be? What is appropriate dress in the summertime? All right. Well, this is hard for me because I am told so many times nobody thinks like me, nobody <laughs> acts like me, no mother asks the questions that I ask. Except for that Nancy girl on the radio exactly. show with you, so right? Now I found someone who <laughs> right, has yes. a, we have something in common. But all I can control as a parent is the way my kids do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that what's poured into them is something different than what society promotes. So I can't even get my kids' friends to say hello without my <laughs> son saying, acknowledge my mom and dad, because they don't like you anymore because you don't. Right. <laughs> and if you want to come here, you need to acknowledge Do them. they knock on the door or do they just walk in? You know what? It depends on the kid. But I don't care. I want our home to be a place where people feel welcome. I really, really do. 
but I also feel very strongly about the fact that they will come in and be respectful. Manners. So to answer mm-hmm. your question, Dave, like I, I'm the clothing thing is so far off my radar. I'm just trying to get them to look me in the eye, not be texting while they're doing that, and be <laughs> able really to be able to impart something upon them that says, oh, you know what, you're so much better than the way you're dressing. You're so much better than what I've seen on your Facebook page. You're right. so much better than... The, the company you're keeping in many right. instances. So it's like, why do we continue to contribute to the degradation of our society? You know, why are we letting our kids? I will just tell you this, okay? My daughter, 25 years old, and she, my family hates it. What do you, does your family hate it when you use them as examples? On the no, show? I told my son today I have huge material for the last few days and I will be airing his dirty laundry okay. on the air. <laughs> yes, I told him. Mine just roll yeah. their eyes like, oh my God. My daughter called me when she was picking out a bathing suit for my four and a half year old granddaughter and said, can I, do you think, is it okay if I get Julie a, a two piece bathing suit for the summer this year? And, and I four. said, she's four. And I was like, absolutely not. No, no bikinis for the four year old. Really? Absolutely not. Oh, but mom, it's really cute. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, a bikini One or piece, a two piece? There is a two a piece little well, bathing suit. Okay, you know, it's just a four year old. It's not like a string bikini. It wasn't, a, you know, but I didn't care. I did not care. Absolutely not. I will not take her anywhere in a in a two piece bathing suit. She's four years old. Kids. This is yeah, how, I don't go to that extreme. See, this is how, but because it just no, she doesn't need it's, it cover Let her them enjoy up. Childhood, right? You don't need to be the because object it is of, innocent, right? At that at that age, well, at she, that age, but like, the four year old doesn't know in and of no, itself. No, I, it wasn't being, a lesson for the four year old. It was. But it was, okay, you set that precedent. So then when she's 10. Piercings. Negative. Tattoos. Negative. No. No. Well, none that's of that. what it leads to is what right. I'm saying when you start I mean, them I'm off just, early. I'm just like, no, it's just not necessary. Why would you? But it's really cute. No. So she got her a cute little one piece bathing suit. Well, if you didn't, first of all, okay, let me just say this. She knew what my answer was going to be. Right. And she called she because she approval. just. Sure. Right. And so she knew. She could have just picked out. She had the one piece in her hand. She knew darn well. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Right. So, but no, I just don't. So why would you, you know, you're taking your 12-year-old shopping for a bathing suit and I don't know, just stick with it. Do you go by age when it comes to decisions like that? Or do you look at the overall maturity of your child when it's appropriate to get their ears pierced or when it's appropriate to allow them to go on a date? It's, again, is it all age Nope, you can date when you're 15, or you can date when you're 18. Or is it, you know what, my 12-year-old's more mature than my 18-year-old. Not that the 12-year-old <laughs> wants to go on a date, right. but you make that decision based on their overall, um, where they I think you have to take the kids. You have to take the kids individually. I have to take the kids individually because one of them, yeah, was more mature than the other. You know, my, our, my 16, our 16-year-old set the precedent for the rest of them. That, right. I mean, this is the first time we've done this, and I think we might look back and say, wow, that really was not the right thing at that time. But what we keep saying is, my husband and I, we believe that this is the right thing at this time for this young right. man. Right. So that's all that really matters. But the majority of people that we come in contact with do not agree with the degree that we are involved in our kids' lives. And I want to be a passionate, purposeful, prayerful parent. Right. Not a perfect one, but I want to be those other three things. And if nothing else, and I've said this to you guys before, my kids might not be out there doing the next right thing, but it has absolutely been presented as an option for them and the better option over and over and over. Why do you think that they disagree with the level, with your level of involvement in parenting? Can I I take a quick guess? Part of it is just kids want to do what their parents say they can or can't do. It's the opposite. If mom says I can go to bed at 11, I want to go to bed at midnight. Yeah. But if mom says you can go to bed at midnight, no, nope, I want to go to bed at 1. Part of it's just the inner workings of child versus parent. They want to take the opposite approach no matter what you say. No, but she said that p- other parents disagree oh. with the level, with her level of involvement. But why? Why would you? Do they just think that you're too protective? Definitely because it doesn't that. Definitely feel that. to me like you're protective. It feels to me like you give them options, like you empower them. That's I would what like it feels to believe to that. They would tell you I'm trying to control everything about their life. That doesn't f- that's not what it feels like to but me. But we see things as we are not as they are. So and perception is reality. Yeah. So I think they see it that way. But again, I want to be their friend, but I have I feel like we feel like we have a responsibility to say this is who you are. Right. But like you just said Dave, you can never underestimate the power of desire. And when you mm-hmm. say you can't have that, 
They want it. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. My son was grounded recently, and he would have done anything to have communication with somebody. And now that he's not grounded, I, I asked him, revisit those feelings. Now how badly do you have to have that? People want what they not, can't have. That's right. That's right. And I've, I witness it. And so I think what happens with our children is when we say something and it comes to fruition, as much as it bothers them, I get credibility. Right. And whether they acknowledge it, I don't care. I know the truth. And I know who they're called to be. And I know these desires in my daughters to be beautiful, to be sought after, uh, our core desires that were placed within them. And I know my, my boys, they want to fight a battle. They want an adventure to live. They want someone to rescue. That's, those are God-given desires. Go to a movie then. <laughs> no, but see, they're, they're in there. No, go because, see Captain America. <laughs> or you go watch Braveheart. Watch yeah, Braveheart. There you go. But that, we're supposed to be living that. And so I think... Not no. I mean, C.S. Lewis says our desires are not too strong. The Lord says they're too weak because we've settled so easily on something that's less than what we could have had. See, now we're going to take a break here real quick. But when we come back, um, that's we sort of talked about this before the show and, um, you know, about and going back to something that you said, you know, about the perception is reality and then and you know and maybe tying that in with this with the settling thing for you could do so much better why are you settling for this um and what drives i don't know our our teenagers and our our you know young adults to settle you know and but desire things that they don't really need that that take their own dignity away and they take their own credibility away and um you know and tie that all in together because um, I don't know. You just you raised some very good points about that. So, and I guess it's what you kind of talked about at your seminar yesterday yes, too. So, yes. so it's fresh in my mind. Right. So, <laughs> so she's got it all up here. It's all up here. So we're gonna take a quick break, right, Dave? Is that why you were like waving at me a minute ago? There was no waving going on at all. <laughs> this is you did. All you kind of went like, oh, okay. no, I didn't. I thought you did. Oh, Judy, I was just saying, go back ahead. me up. Keep it going. Yeah. I was looking out of the corner. Hands of my are eye. in each other's palms. Anyway, now I'm waving at you. <laughs> we're gonna take a break. <laughs> yes. <laughs> More Life Matters next with Dave and Nancy, only on your radio, Lake 96.1.